In this video, I'm going to show you how to add realistic atmospheric effects like fog to an image using Affinity Photo. I'll be using a simple overlay image to add the fog. Overlay images work by showing just the fog, rain, snow or whatever on a transparent background. Then when you add them to your image, they allow the image to show through, creating the effect. You can find free overlay images of fog and other effects on the internet with a quick search. But I'm going to use a set of overlays that I've already purchased from the Serif website. Because I've purchased my effects from Serif, I'm able to download them directly into Affinity Photo from my account. When I click the icon for my account in Affinity Photo, it opens a dialog showing my purchases. This is where I can download my overlays if they're not already downloaded. You can see from this that I've already purchased several overlay packs that include fog, rain and snow effects. The one I'll be using in this video is Atmosphere by James Ritson. I think James has done a great job with these overlays and they're of a very high standard. As my overlays are already downloaded to Affinity Photo, I can close the dialog. The place to find the downloaded overlays is in the Asset Studio panel. It's quite possible your Assets panel isn't visible at the moment. If you can't see it in the interface, you can display it from the View menu by selecting Studio and then Assets. This is also where you can import any overlays you've downloaded from the internet. Click the menu icon at the top of the panel and then you can pick the Import Assets option to select them. At the top of the Assets panel is a drop down where you can select the asset collection you want to use. Today I'll be using the JR Fog and Mist collection. You can see the different overlays have been grouped in the Assets panel under the headings of Fog and Mist. Now, if you want to create the most realistic atmosphere in your photos, you need to pick the right type of image to start with. I shot this image a few days ago on a misty morning. It means that adding more fog to the scene is going to be believable. If I tried this with a sunny summer's image shot midday, it would probably look false without me doing a lot of work. To add the fog overlay, I'm going to click and drag it from the assets panel and then drop it onto my image. After that, I can click and drag the handles on the size of the overlay to resize it. In this image, the trees are on a slope, so it might look better if the mist was angled slightly. You can do this very easily by clicking and dragging the rotate handle at the top of the layer. This allows you to rotate the image to any angle that you want to use. With the overlay in position, let's look at the mask that it comes with. By default, these are turned off, so let's check their effect one at a time. The first one fades the fog from the top of the frame, and the other fades it from the bottom. For this scene, I think the mask to remove the fog from the foreground is all that's needed. But even using these masks, you'll find situations where they don't work well. Rather than changing the default mask on the overlay, we just need to add a new mask to it. In case you weren't aware, Affinity Photo lets you add multiple masks to the same layer. As well as preserving the original mask, it means you can adjust settings like the overlay and blend mode for each mask separately. Currently, the mist doesn't look entirely convincing because it covers all of the trees. Ideally, it would be nice if it appeared to pass behind the trees nearest to the camera. We can do this with some selective masking to hide the overlay from those trees. I'll start by turning off the fog layer so that I can see the original image. I'm going to use this to select the trees so that I can paint through the selection and onto the mask layer. If I go to the channel studio panel, I can check each colour channel in the image to decide which one's best to use. What I'm looking for is one where the trees are clearly separated from the background. With this image, I could use any of the colour channels, but I'm going to pick the blue one. I can then load the channel as a selection by right clicking to load a pixel selection. You then see the marching ants appear on the image showing the selections being made. Now for the important part. This selection is the reverse of what I want to use, because the light areas are selected, but the darker trees aren't. To invert the selection, I'm going to use the Select menu and choose Invert Pixel Selection. With that done, the marching ants are now getting in the way, so I'll hide them using the View menu. This hides the marching ants, but importantly, the pixels are still selected. We're now ready to start painting, so let's turn on the fog layer again so that we can see the effect as we paint. I'll select the brush tool to paint with and set it to be black with a soft edge to the brush. I'll then click the layer mask to be sure that it's selected. Then when I paint, I know I'll be painting onto the mask and not the image. Now I can paint over the trees where I want to hide the fog. This creates a more realistic fog effect and gives the scene a feeling of depth. 
If the effect looks too strong, you can adjust the opacity of the mask which reduces the overlay effect. Alternatively, you could adjust the opacity of the overlay, which you could also do to make the effect stronger. Now there are a few other options to try if you want to produce different effects. One is to change the blending mode. If I switch the overlay from the screen to the add blending mode, it creates a different effect, as do the other blending modes. Another option is to duplicate the layer to create a stronger effect. You can then adjust the opacity of that layer as well as trying different blending modes with it. Now this image was taken using a telephoto lens and a long focal length. It creates a flat perspective in the scene which compresses depth and it means the overlays are easy to work with. But what if we used a wide angle lens and wanted to add an overlay? We would then need to change the perspective of the overlay to match the wide angle lens. The way to do that is to distort the perspective of the overlay using Affinity Photo filters. If you want to know how to do that, watch this video next. It explains how to change the perspective of an image to create a wider field of view using Affinity Live filters.